in three, two, one. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us under the library. As usual, we are continuing our Blood on the Rocks module, uh, the homebrew campaign in the town of Bloodstone. My name's Arthur, I'm the host, uh, and I'm also playing Harold. We are two investigators short tonight for the first time ever. Uh, so for those of you watching the YouTube feed, um, I, I apologize that the frames don't line up. I just noticed it right before we started and uh, it's going to drive me bonkers. Uh, I hope it doesn't drive you as crazy as it does me. Uh, with that, uh, the folks who are here are Chris as Bo, Emily as Florence, Rick as Philip Donner, and of course, as always, our incredible keeper is Michael. Michael? Take the reins. Hey, thanks for joining us in Bloodstone. Bloodstone is a live action tabletop role playing game set in the Call of Cthulhu world. And Are it you is sure? A... <laughs> I, I had to look. I had to look back at the feed to see if anybody was making faces at you because I was like, "What's going on? Is somebody distracting Michael? Who's distracting Michael?" <laughs> Uh, yes, it's a horror tabletop role-playing game, and as such has themes of violence, gore, and other things that you might find offensive or unsettling. Uh, we hope you'll stick with us and join us as we explore Bloodstone. And you can also, if you're having fun with us and want to get some miniatures or some other cool things in the mail, join us on Patreon at patreon.com under the library. Ooh, there we go. There's a nice one. What? And also Ooh. proof that I never dust. I haven't dusted in like 10 years. <laughs> oh, I thought that was part of right. it. I yeah, thought it was. Don't, <laughs> don't say that. That's that's totally part of the Oh, piece. yeah, man. I totally wove uh, mohair strands. There you go. Yeah, man. That's much better. It's all about All right, marketing. Emily, take us away to our recap of two weeks ago. We missed us. Okay. At Gerald's house, the investigators feel a tremor as the structure of the house shifts post dynamite yeah, uh, <laughs> Harold moves the bed to access the hatch to the basement and Quentin is just ready to go down there Bo cautions him because of his prior experience but he shrugs it off and as Quentin is heading for the basement and Harold and Bo are considering following him down. Philip decides to autopsy Gerald. Quentin demands a body part to bait the animals in the basement to protect himself from the animals in the basement. And Philip provides him with an arm, uh, which Quentin attaches to a bedsheet and lowers down. It is immediately pulled out of his grasp. He also feels a powerful push on his mind, but he's protected by his insanity. Uh, I think as he's doing all of this, Bo was fashioning some torches and uh, the results of the autopsy were that Gerald was fully human. Quentin realizes that Gerald must have been possessed as he was. So um, at this point, shift gears and go to uh, who's on the train. I am on the train. Yep, Florence it. and Yocker on the train. The train to Deadwood starts to slow, which is very strange because every week she takes this train. It always just continues. I'm having so much trouble not looking at the chat <laughs> right now. Come you on. Don't want to. And just whatever you do, okay. don't look at the chat. So okay. I, 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 I just realized where that whole train slowing thing that was triggering a memory for me last time, and I can't remember. I couldn't remember where it was from, and it just hit me when you said the train started to slow. It's the third Harry Potter when the Dementor gets on the train. <gasps> I hope no Dementor got on my train. I don't know, um, I didn't but it. it's true. I don't know. Anyway, so Florence leans behind to ask a woman sitting behind her why the train is stopping. It's never done this before, and this woman seems to be a part of a cult. She's talking about the promised land. She's going to a place that everyone can live in comfort with all the food and heat and supplies they need, education. Her husband was a minor and he died 
and she is taking her daughter to live there. We see many horses outside, clouds of dust. The man who was rude to me previously is in charge of the group, very calmly and clearly makes an announcement, leads everyone off the train. He's very polite. And Florence tries one last effort to help this woman see the light, but she is just ignored and she's overcome with sadness. She knows the families are going to their deaths. Back to Gerald's house, Harold has fashioned an Uber torch and Bo agrees to join Quentin, but Quentin goes down first, falls over, hears growling, throws grease on the floor and lights it to oh, wow. uh, ward that off. That face the... that, that Rick made when you said goes down first. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Look, it's what happened. Wow, Rick. I setting can't the, change the facts. Setting the bar so low so early. <laughs> oh. Scott's not here. He's got to make up for it. That's true. Is it usually Scott who goes there? Yeah. Okay. Only on Tuesdays and Sundays. <laughs> okay. Harold and Bo start to climb down the ladder, but the house starts to actually. What? What? <laughs> I I'm just so glad that you were you were just disgusted and continued. That that was the appropriate reaction. The house is starting to fall apart. The ladder is shuddering. Uh, they change their mind and climb back up. Call Quentin, but he refuses to join them. His Ahab is going after his Moby Dick. Quentin heads for the evil hallway and uh, walks towards the purple glow. Oh. oh, and we have one more quick scene back in Bloodstone, uh, back in uh, Deadwood. We've arrived finally. The train arrived at the station. Yocker passed out. Florence found some people to help her carry him to the hospital, and we ended with them entering the waiting room. 16 messages? What the F? No, don't even bother. It just gets worse. Just We should start the game. Nonsense. Do we want to start at the house or at the, uh, at the hospital? I, I am interested to know what's going on at the hospital. Yeah, me too. All right. I don't care what's happening to us. I, I'm... <laughs> I'm so invested in that story. Okay, so uh, you you plop Yocker, or the the two men have plopped Yocker down in the. Uh, hang on, I'm having a little technical difficulty. Am I snapping on y'all's end? No, snapping. Okay. I don't know what that means. Like a you mean... clicking. The audio is like snapping. <laughs> <laughs> you're a jet. You're a jet all the way. You, you wound me, Harold. You wound me deep. I, I, I am still angry at you. There, I, there. I, I honestly don't know how we can be friends anymore. I got to be honest. I Should we talk this out right now? I don't know what's going on. So Michael just said, under his breath and while someone else was talking, and I was pretending that I didn't hear it because I honestly didn't know if we could be friends after this, when I mentioned the the third book and the train, he said, "I haven't read it." What? Oh. Yeah, and and both of those reactions, both Rick's and uh, Emily's reactions, were appropriate. Yeah, them's fighting words, man. I mean, huh. you know. Uh, Wait, how many books are there? Too many. Like okay. in the world. <laughs> Yes, Emily, can you quickly use your supercomputer mind to uh, come up with a Oh my god. Well, here, let me let me um let me just count them. There's one. There are seven. Two, three, four. Okay, well. But then there's I, a play. Yeah, mm -hmm. I read I read two and then I was like, fuck it. Oh, I loved those books. <laughs> well, I just I just ended up watching the movies. I made it through like the third or fourth chapter of the first book. I mean, it was you know there was a thing. There was an owl. Was oh cool. yeah. man! I would watch I would watch the movie and then I would read the book and I'd go, oh wow, all this cool stuff that didn't make it into the movie. And I did that the second time. And then after that it was like, oh, God, I don't, I don't want to double dip anymore. I'll just watch the movie and that'll be good enough. I have listened to those audiobooks, the entire series, at least 10 times. Holy crap. Yep. Yeah. Fuck. I'm listening to them again right now. 
right right as we're, we're yeah, playing I was yeah about to say. exactly <laughs> you guys are fucking boring these books are great <laughs> well i haven't read the series 10 times but i have read it multiple times the audiobooks are amazing who reads them wait what uh, books jim are we dale talking about? um he has won awards for his reading of those books okay. harry potter are you st- oh, okay <laughs> really same same ones chris <laughs> 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 all right, I'm with you, Chris. All right, all right. anyway, Yocker. Yocker. It's got an arm so thing. The two men plopped Yocker down in the chair. He's not looking so good. And in fact, as they plop him down, he passes out and just kind of falls over in the chairs. And uh, you're greeted by uh, two doctors who come from the back. The nurses have yelled for a doctor to come assist them. And... Uh, they're they're coming up and they're they're just rubbing their chins and taking some pulses and looking at Yocker, you know, somewhat like a butcher might assess a cow before they or uh, a steer before they, you know, proceed to chop it up. Oh, I thought you were going to say chop its nuts off. <laughs> Yeah, you specifically went from from cow yeah. to steer. Yeah, I wondered and, why the and being a Texan, I figured you knew about these things. So, but I, you don't really I... butcher a cow; you would butcher a steer. So. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. No, oh, yeah. They let the cows live to yeah, breed cows... and make milk and the like. Yeah, until McDonald's needs them. Oh boy. Yeah. See, and there goes our McDonald's sponsorship. We were really close on that. I'm, I bet we were. <laughs> and now you've blown it. Uh, yep. Nice job. Won't be the first then. <laughs> uh, Speaking of which, I'm going to have a circus peanut. Oh, here we go. And, and circus so, peanuts by Spanglers, our only uh, sponsor. All right, Florence. So as you're watching, uh, the Do the doctors whisper to each mm. other a couple of times, and he he motions for one of the nurses to come over, and they start to lift the very stout yocker up and uh are you doing anything oh i I was just didn't want to cut you off okay i'm waiting Uh, okay jump in here any any i do i'm i'm jumping literally jumping in wait a minute uh i'm with him can you tell me where you're taking him yes yes uh and you all my name is florence this is yocker florence are you the marital spouse of the mm, injured. I am a friend. But not a spouse. He has no spouse. No spouse. He, he makes a little knot, uh, uh, jots down a little note. Uh, any family in the immediate area? Just some very good friends. And he does have an uncle, but he's not here today. He is back in Bloodstone. Do you have contact information for the uncle i can give you an address oh that would be that would be wonderful could you give it to me now uh well he works at seraphim falls in bloodstone beautiful name and what is seraphim falls that is the local mortuary oh who are competitors (laughs) actually we work hand in hand (laughs) So perhaps you know his uncle, Jeb. Uh, no, Jeb. we we have a, a local we have a local funeral parlor here in Deadwood. No need of one in Bloodstone. Are you from Bloodstone? I I am from Bloodstone. Hmm. Interesting. Have you had a uh, health assessment lately? I have. A friend of mine there is actually a a doctor. Hmm. What kind of doctor? Uh, she uses more natural, a more natural approach, no, holistic, still, I perhaps. Thought she, I thought she meant you. <laughs> well, Phil hasn't her. checked me out. Friend, that's a doctor. <laughs> wow. Uh, nurse, could you please escort Mr. Yaka to surgery bay two? We'll need to operate immediately. Uh, um, 
do you, I have a little bit of information about his recent medical history. I would love to share that if that could be of any use to you. That might be important. Go ahead. I mean, uh, as far as I know, he is in this condition because of a blood transfusion that happened in Bloodstone. Oh, dear Lord. A doctor in Bloodstone gave a blood transfusion? He did try. Hmm. Do and me a favor, ma'am. What is your name? Uh, my name is Florence. Florence. If you're ever in Bloodstone and sustain an injury, you're, you're better off taking the train here. I will keep that in mind. Yes. I just yeah. want to make sure that I give you all of the information that I can for Yocker's sake, though. He mm. did have an abscess that formed on his arm. And mm. another friend of mine who is a doctor was able to lance <laughs> that abscess. And he cleaned it and cauterized it. And uh, he also warned Yocker that there could be a chance of tetanus. Tell me, being from Bloodstone with all these doctors, <laughs> yes. the general health of the population yep. in Bloodstone? And there's a third doctor that <laughs> hasn't been mentioned, Red. <laughs> I didn't specify which doctor did the, oh, okay. the transfusion. Yeah, the per true. capita number of doctors in Bloodstone. <laughs> and, uh, and yet the overall this... health of the place is not so good. <laughs> the overall health of Bloodstone, we are actually worried right now. There are there have been some strange, so almost a wasting sickness. I, I myself am not an expert. I think, but... I think you misunderstand me. I'm not actually oh. asking for the history of the health of Bloodstone. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Just asking rhetorically for you to make an observation about the citizens of Bloodstone and the capability of the doctors there to provide care. I'm just suggesting if you have health issues in the future that you come see us. Well, thank you for that advice. Uh, so Do you think you can help my friend? Hmm. It's quite major. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, uh, is he financially capable of paying for these services? I think the mortuary does quite well, especially right now in Bloodstone. Mm -hmm. And uh, when will you be back for your friend? Well, when should I come back? Do you think you'll need to keep him overnight? Should I come back later today? I will eventually need to transport him back you're, to Bloodstone. You're an optimist, huh? Mm. I try. Wow. Yes. Uh, I, I, would, I would give us at least a couple of days here. OK. Mm -hmm. Can I also give you my address, just in case? Sure, happy to write it down. Uh, my store and my residence is Potter's Place. Mm -hmm. in Bloodstone. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Nothing else. Do okay. what you can. Please keep me updated. I will check in soon. How, how about, OK, sure. I mean, I'll probably come by again later today, if that's all right, just to see how things are going. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't do things like y'all do in Bloodstone. This isn't a hack shop. <laughs> uh, the surgery might take some time. And your friend, uh, I hope you realize, is quite ill. I do realize that. Right. And you understand his prognosis is not good. I am sure a man of your talents can do impressive things for him. I'm, I am a man of God, but I am not a man with God, if you know what I mean. No. No. <laughs> I worship the cloth, but I am not a miracle worker, miss. Mm. Well, do what you can. Mm. Yes. We will do our best. Um, yes, if you return this afternoon, I am Dr. Goodfellow. You may summon me, and if I'm available, I will give you a, a report on... Uh, he flips back in his notes. Yocker's prognosis. Thank you very much, doctor. 
I will be back this afternoon. Okay, wonderful. We'll, uh, <clears throat> you, you should say some prayers. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I <laughs> have love a, Dr. Have a Goodfellow. Good <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so fucking funny. Thank you. Oh, you've said that. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All You're right. Welcome. Goodbye. I'm so glad. And he just kind of stares at you. I I assume you like back out the door with your I, six thank yous. Yes. And... Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. I hope can somebody animate just that sequence. Oh my god. That would be great. I and would love to see the animated knocker is just bleeding out. Yep. Right? Like he, he's in like a, a fever dream, grabbing at the air, and these two are just talking. Yeah, just I, I could just picture the the like white screen. And a table and yak around it, his arm hanging off and just dripping blood on, onto the floor while like, the camera goes back and forth with these two. And it just grows each time it cuts back, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, that would be hilarious. I wish I was, was an animator. That would be really fun. There's quite yeah. a few I'd like some illustrations of. Yeah. Bo and the guy on the street would be, the dead man on the street would be a good one for me, too. Bo and his fire on the street would be amazing. Wait, no, or not Bo. I'm sorry, Philip and his fire. Oh, oh yeah, Phil and his fire his, would be really nice. His campfire <laughs> right next to the house <laughs> in the middle of town. All right, Florence. So you're leaving the hospital, and uh, I don't know. Tell me how you feel here. I feel very uneasy, possibly because the doctor didn't seem to be very invested in helping Yaker. And also because the prognosis is not good and I don't know how I would get him home if he can't move under his own <laughs> volition, but I have to go see Rose. Okay. So I'll head, should I head over there now or do you wanna yeah. switch scenes? It's up to y'all, what do y'all wanna do? Yeah, why don't we pop over to us and then go back okay. to? All right. I will say, uh, Florence, do a spot hidden as you. I can't wait to hear Crazy Rose. <laughs> oh, I know. Don't call her that. It's very insensitive. That, this is That's a, true. A, the player is calling her that. The character <laughs> character never would. Um, I actually got it. I matched. Matched is is a success. Okay. Question mark? Uh, Question mark. <laughs> you, um, it, you walk out of the hospital and you're really distraught and uh, you kind of, you just have this sinking feeling as you kind of look out on the streets of Deadwood and you've been here many, many times. Um, but as you, as you look out over the streets, it, you just have this really heavy, heavy feeling and, um, it's normally a fairly hospitable town to you, um, but you you just feel like somebody or something is watching you and it feels amiss at the moment. Oh. And you're not sure if it's because you're so upset or if if it's because there, there's actually somebody following you from the train or anything like that. Okay. okay. Well, in that case, I'll just sort of clutch my bag to me and hurry okay. i know exactly where the yeah. where my destination is i go there every week so i'm gonna move kind of quickly and just surreptitiously look around okay and i now have a rockwell song in my head so thank you what, what did i say wrong no it was great I, no, I actually I I always I, I, feel like somebody's watching, watching me. me. No, no, Rick put rhetorically in the in the chat. Like I that was a long chat. time ago. That was a long time All ago. Right. That was a long time ago. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's zoom over to the 
house cabin that y'all dynamited and you're now running from uh, it was shaking correct yeah okay and uh there's a there's kind of a as you're running away there's a, a creaking sound and a crunching as most of the eastern half of the house just caves into the ground so this would have been the part of the house located remember there was a room off to the side that seemed to have like equipment that was possibly generating electricity mm -hmm. in the tunnels mm -hmm. it would have collapsed over that area and then the the left side of the house and over kind of where the animals were and everything else is still intact uh mm. where's the kitchen in relation to this the kitchen uh so the the area that collapsed was essentially in front of the kitchen so that it collapsed straight down and then the kitchen area is still standing does that make sense? Yeah. And we're fleeing the house. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So Can I flee via the kitchen? Oh, I, thought question. Had already, I thought you had already fleed. Yeah, I had already fleed. Yeah, well, I think y'all had fled. Yeah, fled. Fled. Um. <laughs> when someone coins a fun word, I use it. Yeah, they fleed. Sorry. Okay. Uh, not your fault, Emily. That was an appropriate correction. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, uh, there was something that I wanted to do before I fleed. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. <laughs> uh, we don't have to worry about getting too far tonight. Nope. Okay. Um, is, is, is that possible? Want I wanted to grab the blender. Oh, is the tip of your is finger there, still in yeah, it? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Make a dexterity roll. Okay. Just like, I can't even go there. It's like. I should be good. Okay. I'll take my dice out for the first time tonight. Oh, yeah, that's a success. Um, that's a hard success. Okay. So you. Yank the blender, uh, you grab it right off the counter, and uh, the house is really shaking, and it gets caught on the, the cord, right? And so you just pull open a drawer underneath it. This is a, a very uh, unusually dexterous moment for Harold. He's pretty and, dexterous because he's got to do all that, you know, uh, oh, manual, that, you know, he's putting together stuff all the time, so he's, he's pretty good with his hands. Grab a knife, you just slam it down on the counter over the over the cord and um and then grab the blender and jump out the window. Perfect. Oh, nice. I like the jumping out the window, rolling. <laughs> on Protecting your feet. the blender. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cradling it like a baby. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and as you do this, right, you would have had you stayed in the kitchen, you would have been safe. Uh, that's not the part of the house that crumbled. Um, and but you get out the window and you hear the loud crunch and uh, of boards kind of snapping and things and as it caves in and there's you know you see a little dust kind of rising above the roof of the house okay once it's caved in i'm gonna go back and survey try to get a sense of the structural integrity of what remains yeah i'll i'll, I'll be with you Bo. Mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm with that too Okay, and you can give me like a knowledge roll on that or something. Uh, twenty. Yeah. Uh, so you're you're able to ascertain at this point that the structure. It, I mean, that's where the dynamite blast went off, and it seems to make sense that that's what caved in, and the rest of the structure seems pretty stable still. So the part that's collapsed uh, is over the bedroom, as well, right? No, 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 no. Sorry. Well, I guess I don't have a sense of the floor plan there. Yeah. I know there was a little room off the bedroom, right? Let's see. I'll just draw it out here. Kitchen, bedroom. There's only three rooms in the house. 
And then um, right. after you do that, do you want to uh, take a picture of it and just text it to me and I'll throw it up? Oh, so it's the front room that collapsed? Yeah, the front, uh, the oh. front right of the house. Oh, okay. And was that where the, that's not where the door, or is that where the door is? The front no, door? The front door. Well, front door. Yeah, the front door was right on the front of the house, right there. Okay, I get it now. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we we got to go and uh, see if we can get uh, what's his face? Yeah, uh, numb nuts the, out of there. The, Quentin. Yeah, Quentin, they had Quentin numb nuts out of the. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, uh, the part over the access hatch it ain't collapsed. So, and you'd still want to save those poor animals. Well, well, yeah, I, absolutely, but I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it wasn't that collapse right where where Quentin was? Uh, no, it's not over the bedroom. Uh, but hadn't, I mean, it's, hadn't he gone in there? Well, we gotta, we gotta try and save him anyway. Yeah, we can't just well, lie he, in there. He, he went not, in there, but there weren't the creatures, some sort of a large, uh, d- terrible beast or, or something down there. Should we at least listen or? Or have some caution here. I mean, my gosh. Yeah, you'll have to remind me, Phil, because I honestly don't remember what happened scant moments ago. Yeah, well, was, I I certainly did, wouldn't. Um, we, uh, did we hear a monster? Yeah, did I don't we... know if we did. Um, oh, I feel like maybe we did. Weren't we down there and uh, something? Didn't we throw something down? Boy, it was really was just seconds ago, and I I can't well, seem to remember we, it well, very well. I think, I think a bit of board <laughs> fell on my noggin. Yeah, boy, the concussive force of that that Oof, do you, house do you want information. Yes, uh, that would uh, be okay. very I'm helpful asking, if some I'm asking my own if some mysterious entity to provide would... me with information. It yes. should be in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, awesome. So first, he threw down the arm from Gerald to okay. see if there was anything around. It was immediately like grabbed out of his oh, grasp. Yeah. And then he heard other animals, which you probably would have also heard if you were leaning over the, the door. And for that reason, when he went downstairs, he dumped a bunch of oil and lit a fire. Yeah. And I was down there with him, right? <laughs> you never went all the way down. You both started oh, down just, the ladder. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And then thought better of it. Yeah, and okay. then stuff started collapsing, right? Is that mm-hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay. I remember something getting thrown down. I didn't remember that it was part of a person. <laughs> okay. Yeah. In so, hindsight, yeah. that seems a little horrible, but uh, okay, that guy was kind yeah. of a dick. So we so. do know there are things down there, and yeah, we got to go down to see if uh, Quentin's okay. He might be, you know, being chawed upon by one of those th- animals or. Uh, right, but I I do agree with Philip. I I was certainly not suggesting that we blindly sprint into the oh. abyss there. Uh, you oh, know, sure. waiting to get chomped on. Uh, I I think we should be circumspect about it. And yeah, I know. well, I still have those uh, to- a couple of torches I made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, torches would be good. Listening's probably good. Maybe uh, you know, uh, chucking another an arm down. Torch. Yeah, we could throw another piece of. Gerald oh right, down. I got it. That's right. I spent all that time making that crazy torch and barely used it. Yeah. So uh, now that we've mapped out everything we could do, should we do spring something? into action? Yeah. I let's. <laughs> is there any more of uh, of Gerald <laughs> left to to huck down there and see if it gets at? Sure. Okay. Well, let's grab something and and drop it down the hole. Philip, you're pretty good at at cutting up people, aren't you? Well, you know, it's a, it's a knack, inherited, uh, you know, from a long lineage of, uh, we don't need to go into it. But yeah, I mean, I've got some experience, both uh, socially and professionally. So uh, why don't we uh, go ahead and do so? It's all you there, friend. Okay, oh, well. yeah. Well, I'm just going to chop this up here. Nice little <laughs> morsels, maybe inch by inch bites, get around the bone and try and pop it out through some you know, uh, around the joints and, uh, uh, like a good chicken wing, you want to, you want to carve it off the bone, but then have the bone there as sort of a handle. So you've got sort uh-huh. of, you know, uh, like, uh, like a corn dog. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the animal I don't know will, if these will... metaphors are true because of the time setting and who knows if 
chicken wings and metaphors were around back then. I really don't think they are metaphors. <laughs> chicken wings and corn dogs were around no, back they, then. No, they threw chicken wings out until just recently. Right, yeah. So 100 years in the future, people are going to be doing this. Yeah, so someone's stuff. going to say, rather than throw these in the trash, let's monetize them. Yeah, and they'll be like, we got it from that guy, Phil Donner, in yeah. the 1850s. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be the plan. 90s, whatever. He was alive in the 50s. Yeah. Was he? That cholera. No. Oh. How old are you, Phil? <laughs> Not many people are 40. Well, only keep... Florence, and that's why she has no hit points. Oh, that's right. We're yes, we're not forty. Just gonna, just gonna. We all chose to stop aging at thirty-nine. Handle all this food. Right. Gerald. So, are you gonna toss something down there? Food? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. yeah, that's right. You did say food, didn't you? What? Uh, food, that's food a good catch, the, there, food, keeper. Yeah, food for the animals is what he's saying, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, We're that's alarming. Uh, but well, let's Phil, let's just pretend good, that didn't good, happen. You got a good grip on that bowl. Why don't you just uh, <laughs> lean on in there and chuck it down? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Uh, I'll pop ah! a of, yeah, that was that's what I figured. <laughs> just for the audience he was trying to message me that he was going to pocket us cut a few small pieces of food but well shit he sent that to the whole group chat <laughs> uh, can i roll to see if i notice him putting food in his uh i think you should actually oh, yeah. 26 okay. yeah uh, yeah phil phil i couldn't uh, couldn't help but notice you put some of that meat away in your uh in your pouch there well, you know, they say, uh, you know, waste not, want not. And uh, you got to make sure you have a little bit for a rainy day. And uh, yeah, case, I, I, I'm pretty sure is, that there's that... plenty of animals right outside. There's uh... yeah. And I don't think that that phrase uh, applies to humans. In case we end up running into some sort of creature, you're going to want to have something that you can throw as a diversion. Yeah, we could throw chicken wings. It don't need to be human. Uh, you don't know. This thing's got a taste maybe now after Quentin. So, uh, oh, well, you know. Okay. How, how do we I, know I, that Quentin's not just fine waiting at the bottom of the ladder? What was that? I think I heard something. We should go over there and check it out. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go. <laughs> so is the, uh, is the hatch still open or? Uh, yeah, make a luck roll. Oh, my luck's good. Oh, it's not 85 good. Mm, so it's uh, it's wedged uh, with the shifting of the house and the falling, and it takes a little bit of uh, stomping to get it. You, you actually just, you can't get it out with your hands, so you stomp on it really hard until you smash it through, and it leaves an opening and it crumbles down below. Oh. Okay, nice. Uh, well, I take uh, uh, one of the torches and uh, take out my uh, flint and scrape off some uh, sparks until that, uh, oh, yeah, I put human fat on it. Here, who am I to talk about Phil's dining habits when yeah. I have torches wow. smeared with human fat? Yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> All of a sudden, the bad guys, they just don't seem all that yeah. bad. Leave, leave, a couple of y in a, yeah. <laughs> leave a couple of y'all in a sandbox, and man, you'll make the monsters run away. We yeah. will poop in it. Yeah, the, the human fat wouldn't ignite, so I'd have to blah, 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 fast forward, you know, some kindling, t -t 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 start the kindling on fire, put the torch over the kindling, stomp out the kindling. Now I have two torches. I'll fire up my torch too, which goes. Here, <laughs> Phil, here's a, here's a torch for you. We don't want to leave any man without a light source. Didn't one of you have an electrical torch? Uh, Wayne did, bastard. He took it into the void. Oh, sorry. Wow. Does all of his stuff go into the void with him too? Doesn't just fall out like a video game? <laughs> <laughs> 
the void rejects his. Uh... <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> He's just gone to the next level. Y'all just need to follow him. We can't loot him. No, no, it's just the next level. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Right, Don't we'll, worry. Just go. We'll into run everything. in after him. <laughs> yeah, everything will be okay. That's the whole point of the game is to get into the flashlight. The... Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, I, I'm gonna carry. Oh no, we're gonna throw the Phil's. Yeah. Throw the um. We're gonna throw some Gerald down. Throw some. Yeah. Spring sprinkle a little Gerald down there. Let's see if those is creatures there, uh, come. Uh, since we're near like the kitchen area and everything, is there is there like a piece of wire after everything sort of collapsed within the housing or the building? Uh, excuse me. Like the electrical there, wiring. Yes, yeah, because most houses aren't wired. Uh, you know, with outlets and stuff in 1892. But he uh, knows. He was there. Come on, guys. He well, knows I, there's I'm wire. Sorry. I know. I'm sorry. It's there, hard not to be a smart the, ass. There's the exposed wire that uh, oh, Harold God. chopped off the blender. Oh. That's what I was saying. Yeah, just grab that. Is this the part that's still <laughs> attached to the wall or the part that's attached to the blender? Well, why don't you lick it and find out? <laughs> <laughs> well, since Harold took the blender and he cut it off right at the back of the blender, I'm going to say the wire is laying on the countertop. Yeah, I mean, you don't know nothing about electricity. It's true. It's brand spanking new. We and could make been, a little. And you're, song a, about you're it a mountain man. Teach you about electricity. Living up in. Uh... My character's also a doctor. I don't think he's dumb, but yeah, okay, he's got an intelligence of like. Well, maybe. how long? How long you been in the mountains? Can we use Not... the term "doctor" with like the loosest kind of definition there? Yeah, or... there are definitely some air quotes around that doctor. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if Dr. Goodwell's suspect or not, but he was pretty astute on his observation about the doctors and Bloodstone. Well, my memory about Phil, just from talking to him uh, over this past, how long has it been? Like two days? Two days. Two and a half. (laughs) These past two and a half days. (laughs) These past six months. He was a doctor back east. So he's a trained doctor, and then something happened maybe he got the wanderlust maybe he was run out of town on a rail but he ended up going uh, west and uh you know living the, su- the survivalist life uh, up in the mountains well, i thought that's, that was i thought that, that was quentin no that's uh phil yeah oh all right but quentin no quentin was a medic in the uh civil war okay uh phil was an actual doctor back in uh, boston okay Oh, we're never going to find out who Quentin really was. Oh, I'm sure we can get a backstory. When he, when I don't back. think Quentin knew who he really was in the end. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Phil just got a. You're probably right, Bo. I mean, like a little wanderlust because Boston ran out of fava beans and Chianti. So Phil that's just, what I'm thinking. Is yeah, he, he's well, just one it, step ahead of the, uh, what do you call him? The profiler. Yeah, there you go. Right. Yeah. There's been a lot of people eating in Boston. First, yeah. we thought it was a wild dog, but it's clearly, uh, you know, a knife wound. All oh, those there, leftovers human, in his pocket. Human bite, human bite marks. Do you, do you think you could make a, yeah, oh, I was thinking make a knife out of human teeth, but that probably wouldn't. Out of a Jesus. human, out of a human bone. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. Moving forward. Not that I would know that, but. Anyway, well, I'd like to take some wire still attached to the wall that I would I guess try and cut it in a felt swoop, just a piece of it. Tell me more. Oh, I don't do that. What's the handle a knife made of? That's what I was about to say, like a wooden handle. That's what I'm looking for, something that's insulated. What's insulation? Yeah. Um. And not, you know, not for nothing, wooden handles on knives um, aren't generally, at least in this time period, all the way around the yeah, metal. Yeah, it's usually yeah, a metal tang, and it sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's a good conductor. All right, never mind. Is there a is there an axe? Is there an axe or a hatchet? That seems uh, well. Reasonable. You what do you you have something to cut? You just cut the leg off or something? A saw? I think he wants to go fishing. 
is is what he's trying to do. Am I am I right? Thank you. Okay. You're very much correct. Okay. There's tendons. Oh God. Ligaments. Oh, you've used uh, lengths. Don't encourage of him. You, you know he's used lengths of intestine before. Don't okay, so encourage was that different, him. Is that a different campaign? Where it's a you, different oh, campaign, oh, and you're still encouraging him. No, no, no. I did that in this. I took the intestines. Yeah, I took the intestines did. in this. Yes, I got the intestines. I thought I it was the thought, one where we were on the island. And I was talking to myself. Uh, it was, oh, I did it, it in both, actually. It was both. It's yeah, intestines yeah. did he yeah. take? Strips of flesh? Oh, I mean, there's no, plenty no, of no, options no. here. I, I took a couple feet of intestines. So what I'd like to do is, uh, and if I need to go and get more, I, I will. But you know, I would I would take some of the meat. I guess I would put it at the end of one end of the intestines and tie that off. So you get like a, a meat sock. And this then I would really redundant, but sure, go ahead. <laughs> and then I would I would drop it down, and I would tell the other two gentlemen get get your get your firearms ready and point it down. And if this starts to go, I want you to let let loose shooting down there, and let's okay. see if we can. Do I really have to write? Phil makes a meat sock. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. And we oh. might have just uh, named this episode. Phil makes a meat sock. <laughs> I... All right. Yep. So I'm standing by Phil with my shotgun pointed down. There okay. You go. And as you stand there staring at the meat sock in the in the basement, uh, you're just you're just staring. Nothing seems to be happening. And okay. You mean after I've dropped it down? Yeah. So now I'll go. I'll go. Oh, I'll kind of call down it. Oh, oh no! I've fallen and I can't get up. And. And as you do that, you you he leaves like a cupping blood mark uh, around his face of yeah, Gerald's from that sl- blood, sloppy intestines. Yeah. Did you want to did you want to recreate that, uh, Rick? Yeah. Do you want to you want to get some lipstick go, and try and recreate some, that? I, yeah, I'll get some jelly. So okay, yeah. so now Phil has these like sc- like scabified lips, like right in the middle there where he tried to to cut the mark of the gun off of them and this half moons of blood on each cheek from cupping his mouth um, he's making a facial bullseye yeah his his charisma is getting higher and higher by the well, minute i'm going to be more direct and just say quentin quentin can you hear us are you okay down there <laughs> Uh, make a make a charm roll on that. Oh, geez. Hmm. Even know if I have that. Interesting. Uh, ninety-five. I don't think I'm that charming. Oh, I'm oh, one away from being. Wow. That was. Huh, horrible, you horrible. almost summoned Cthulhu out of the earth. <laughs> that was damn close. All right. Uh, nothing. Y'all aren't getting anything. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'm. I'm gonna go down. I. I've got my shotgun. I got my torch. If anything uh, runs up on us, I'll I'll take care of it. Okay. We'll follow down uh, behind you. All right. So y'all go down kind of this wobbly rope ladder and uh, make a dex roll as you climb down it. Yeah, I'll throw the torch down first, so I'm not, you know, and I've got my uh, shotgun strap. So I, I don't just, know what you're. Well, just to. so I'm using both hands. Oh, okay. I'm not like you know balancing with. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to wait at the top for uh, a second and I'll say Bo if you there's danger just give a tug to the meat sock and uh I can drop it as a distraction. I ain't tugging your goddamn meat sock. This is the third time you asked me. No I, means no. Okay. All right. I'm just what is it there's an option. Harold? <laughs> oh, nope. Oh my gosh. I don't think All so. Right. I'll wind up my own meat sock and I'll keep it to myself. Yeah, you can play with your own meat sock. I'm going to bring it up there. So you guys are climbing down. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you so, need me to make a dex roll too? Sure. Holy shit. I just like let's do the slide down. That's an extreme success. All right. There you go. Bam. You You <clears throat> land ready to go. You've got your light out and you're scoping the tunnel to the right. 
Uh, it's all caved in. Is right that here. the animal tunnel? No, no, the animal tunnel was to the left, and then okay. the kind of central tunnel is the one that Quentin went down. So the one to the right is just, I mean, it's not even like moving boards. It's filled with dirt, like the sides of the, the, sides of the tunnels have caved in and collapsed. It would take serious work to excavate it. Well, Harold, do you want uh, to check on the animals? I'm going to see if there's a, a crack in this debris that I can yell through and see if maybe... Uh, Harold's conscious, not Harold, the Quentin. other guy. Quentin. Quentin. I'm, I'm I'm Harold. I, I've already forgotten who the hell he is. He's only, he's only been he's gone. dead to me. Yeah. the The strangest thing, though, is you look through the rubble. Right there's like some some sort of wire that's reaching out that's pulled the things. Remember the there were the strange forms on the ceiling that were mm -hmm. emitting light. That mm -hmm. um, they've been ripped down, like they're partially hanging now. Yeah. And uh, they're hanging off the ceiling and um, and then off to the left, uh, you see where like uh, the uh, where the animals are, you can see cages spread out all over the room, like maybe they've collapsed, like maybe they've fallen over in there. Hmm. Are the uh, light source strings, are they still uh giving off light or are they kaput? no the only light you have right now is your torches okay well i'll just give a holler through the debris for quentin 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 are you okay in there quentin and, and you hear a very meager voice shout back and it says hello and it's most definitely not Quentin's voice. Okay, that was my question. Who the who the hell are you? Is Quentin in there? Um. Um. And that's all the voice says. It's just um. Oh, oh my God! He must have got hit over the head by a beam. Whoever's in there. Well, we know someone's in there, so do you hold tight there, whoever the whatever gender you are over there. Uh, it's going to take us a while to to dig through. Are we sure it's coming from the other side of the rubble? No, 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 no. This isn't from the. So remember, there's a central tunnel. Okay. This is coming from down the central tunnel. Okay. Then remember, oh, I, it sort of snakes around. Okay. Oh, okay. I was yeah, yelling yeah. through the rubble, thinking oh, that's where. No, no, no. Uh, Quentin went, uh, and y'all would have known this because somebody was down there the last time when he walked with him. He went down kind of the central passage way. Okay, and the central one is where the giant uh, device okay. is. Okay. Uh, it's where, uh, it's where, yeah, it's, uh, yes. Okay. okay, so we know that Quentin went down the central passage and it's the right passage that's caved in. Correct. So yes. we would assume yeah. that Quentin's fine. Right. Yeah. And the voice is also coming from the central passage. Right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. there's someone down there who may there have, before. and they may have hurt Quentin. So let's just quick check the left passage to make sure nothing comes up behind us. Okay. We can close the door if they are loose. And well, sure. Sure. So let's. It, I'll. I'll shine my light in there. Just. Okay. Just for the record. So I. I, I've been keeping a look at it up top and I yelled down. You guys need a you guys need a third pair of hands? Yeah, I, I think yeah. we do. I think yeah, we do. There's down. something something hinky going on down here. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna regret this in the slightest. Oh no, so, no, it's it's uh, gonna be perfectly safe. So keeper, I, I just wanna take one last look around across the horizon. Do I see anybody or anything approaching the house? Make a spot hidden. Don't uh, see it. That's a 91. So, uh, <laughs> looks clear up here. Guess I'm going to be jumping down or carefully climbing down. Um, no take backs. You're jumping. Uh, with my... Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll like, a, like, a, like a, you know, 10 foot rope or whatever. I'll, I'll loop up the intestine and... And, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and Indiana Jones with a length of intestine. Yeah, climb on down. 
And I, before I do though, I want to make sure that the, the, the hatch itself is definitely going to stay open. Like I'll probably, oh, we, we smashed it. The hatch oh, you, is... oh, oh, that's what you meant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to make sure that there's nothing in the way. Like it's, we're going to keep this sort of as a, as an open chamber. I don't want anything to fall down. Um, okay. Okay. Right. And then I'll, and then I'll plug down. Okay. Dex roll. Before I climb down. There's, <laughs> there's, what? There's rope. Is that right? Or something that we've used in the past? Or this like a, a, there's, a, like a, there's a ladder. Yeah, it's a rope ladder. It's just a dex check to you know make sure you don't. I I, know, I wanted to make sure. Do we have another rope as a group? Uh, no. Just you're in, we're relying on your intestines. Yeah, I mean, how the hell else are we getting out of here? Except that that intestine that you got wrapped around oh, your I shoulder. Feel bad for all of us to go down this. Okay, guess I'm gonna do it. <clears throat> uh, yep. I'll... Lawrence comes back. Yakker's dead. Everyone yeah. else is just gone. I mean, it, it, just to just to sort of game this out, though, um, uh, Rick. If if we do like, if somebody cuts the the rope ladder, is that what you're concerned about? And you know that we're looking up this tunnel. It, there is enough stuff down here that we could make a ladder. Um, Harold could absolutely make a ladder to to climb back out of here. Yeah, there's all the cages. You could, yeah, exactly uh, bend the doors together and who knows. Are, are you pretending to eat popcorn keeper? Is that what's <laughs> happening? Okay. Okay, so I'll I'll make my dex check to come back. Oh, 32, right, which is you're good. Uh, All right. So you you slide down the ladder and not as gracefully of course as Harold did, but you're you're down on the ground with them and it's um just somewhat of an eerie moment, right? There's little pieces of dust still crumbling down and nothing's really settled. Um, it's clearer than it was, but there's still kind of clouds of dirt in the air. Uh, it's a little, it's it's heavy to breathe. Uh, it's not yeah. very comfortable to breathe in. And yeah, that's where y'all are. All right, now I have my, my Winchester rifle out. Um... And, and sort of at the ready, and I'll and the torch, and I'll say. So, uh, where, where where you guys want me? Uh, so we're gonna. Uh, well, Phil, you got a pistol too, right? Yeah, that pistol would be much better to use at uh, close range than your rifle. You're a smart man, Bo. Yeah, and uh, so here's here's what we have figured out that uh, we're thinking. Then Quentin went down that central passage, but there's uh, there's another voice down there. I was calling out for Quentin, and this other voice said, uh, uh, "said zippity doo da doo 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 do, do. I don't remember." I believe he, he said hello. Hello, but then he kept repeating then, something uh, over and over. Uh, oh, they, he was going uh uh zippity doo da. Uh, just to uh, us, just uh, to. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, All right, so I'll, he's, I'll, listen. He's still doing it. Oh my god. Uh, is, uh, sir, sir, who? Uh, please identify yourself. Uh, who, who are we speaking to? And are you in need of medical assistance? I, I make a charm roll with that. Hopefully, you're more charming than I was. Uh, well, my charm's fifteen. I got a thirty-eight, so I'm gonna say I'm not very, not not enough. Better. You, you, wow, it's surprising could... that you're not more charming. <laughs> <laughs> what with what with all the leftovers in your pockets? The loop of intestines. It's exactly who you want to meet. The blood the around your face. Yeah, the exactly. Weird lips. <laughs> like, I, I I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, everybody, back away slowly. All right. Mm, circus and, peanuts. And. You you hear the voice answer back. It, it seems to have ground or gained a little footing, and it, it it says, "Who are you?" I'm uh, the uh, well-known uh, Philip of the uh, Donners. The, the the well-known Philip. Ah, uh, and 
Where are we, well-known Philip? We're, we're near the town of Bloodstone. Have you heard of it? Why, of course I've heard of Bloodstone. Oh. He, seems to, he seems to get like a little bit more, like each word comes out just a little more fluidly. So I, I, I've got psychology, so I kind of just want to figure out as, as I'm listening to him say this, is he just mimicking back what I'm saying? Or is there genuine sort of trying to piece together like like a patient with amnesia back what they were thinking? Yeah, you know. I'd love for yeah. you to make this psychology rule. Oh, uh, 29. And mine's uh, 60 and 30's a hard. So hard. Yeah. So what you, it sounds like somebody who was really disoriented, maybe traumatically shocked. And uh, they're coming, they're, they're realizing that maybe the situation's not as bad as they first assessed. Hmm. I said, so knowing that I'll say, I'll say, uh, we, we mean, you know, harm. there was a, a, a bit of a, a cave in and uh, we're, we're looking for our friend, uh, but uh, we're happy to help if you are in need of assistance. Uh, we, we uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about what I got. I got. I got nothing else for the short period of time since uh, we've just met each other over no vis- visible distance here. I'm, I'm just a bit confused. We got that. Yes, but uh, these are strange circumstances, and I find myself uh, unsure of my surroundings. You're in a cave underground. What year is it for you, sir, that you recall? Uh, Why, it's 1942, of course. What year is it for you? Why would you ask that question? Huh? <laughs> Why would it occur to you to ask that question as a character? Uh, he sounds confused and he doesn't know where he is. Okay. And I want to, as a, as a, as a doctor, as a, I guess you as could. As a doctor. Yeah. Oh, part of, yes. Part of the medal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Too. Who's president? Yeah. Who's president? What day is it? What yeah. day of the week? Is it year, month? I was going to go down months and days. Okay. But, okay. Uh, he, he went with uh, 1942. 1942? Oh, that fella. Surely he's taken a beam to the noggin. Yeah. Say, sir, I think you may well, have injured your head. Uh, if you, if well, you let's uh, voice, sir, we can help we're going to we're going to head on down to meet you. We don't need to be carrying this conversation on <laughs> long distance. Uh, mm-hmm. Phil, I, I will be prepared, though, because uh, Quentin was telling us, I don't know whether believe him or not, but he was saying there's some sort of evil force down here. So you don't know what you what you might meet. But uh, yeah, I start walking down. Uh, towards be- the before guy. before we head down that tunnel, I just want to make sure that nothing's going to sneak up from behind us from from this tunnel here on the left. OK, uh, well, you so call let's me just, up short. Let's I'll just stop. take a let's take a gander in here and see see what, what's happening in there. So we don't, you know, have like a flood of crazed animals running at us. Yep. So as you, as you, I assume you're looking in there. Oh, shine my light in first. Yeah. So as you shine your light, the whole wall of cages just collapsed, right? It tumbled over and uh, the, the table full of beakers and things that was on the uh, like kind of end of the wall has fallen over. Um, You don't see too many animals in the cages, but you definitely make a spot hidden. Oh, oh no. oh no. Oh no. These never go well for Harold. Sorry sorry guys. You you're dead now. And here comes all the rabid bats. Oh Jesus, that was close. Okay. It's a 92. Okay. Uh you don't you don't see anything but you don't hear anything moving around either. Uh, just have a a feeling of general lifelessness about the room okay and the the cages are empty as far as you can tell okay right they they mostly seem to be empty there's there seems to be like a splotch of fur that's very definitely like crushed in one area nothing's really identifiable under there well then i'll just say okay guys this is it's fine in here there's nothing in here well harold do you see any uh like paw prints coming coming out of the room. Oh, geez, I didn't even think to look for that. Uh, well, let me take let me take a quick look. I'm 
pretty handy with that. Uh, a three. Yeah. Do I see any uh, wow. paw prints? Holy shit. Yeah. That, I mean, there's a whole mix of prints on the ground, right? There's human prints. You know, once they come out of the room, do they head in a particular direction? Uh, there seems to be a set of prints that's gone into the into the the larger set of prints that well i guess with the three you would probably be able to identify them especially given your background uh there's a set of wolf prints mm -hmm. and it leads right into the rubble and your best assessment right is it doesn't come out that it probably trapped it behind the yeah whatever was crushed in there smushed. and and a large enough animal it probably ate the other animals okay yeah so that uh, big old wolf I'm, I'm tracking here and uh, the prints clearly go beyond the rubble there. So that was the, the worst. Well, I mean, you guys got pretty fucked up by what was it? Groundhogs. Yes, we did. So, and, and, you know, I, I just got to say, if, if that voice that we're hearing down there is that darn Fox, I, I'm, I'm out. Well, that, yeah, that's it. The wolf is out of the picture. Uh, foxes uh, they'll latch right on you and you know they won't let go if they're rabid in so, that yeah, that one that was in there out. that that one it did not like me yeah well let's uh well let's be careful uh and head on down and uh take a look at that feller see what his uh, condition is but also keep an eye out for foxes mm -hmm. and prairie dogs and any other thing that might have a box in its head okay mm. let's head down and at that moment, we will break and we'll resume after the break with Florence back in Deadwood. Sounds good. Everybody take five, 10 minutes. Yay. We'll see you on the other side. And we're back from break. Michael, let's get going again. All right, Florence, you're hustling down the street, headed towards the uh, uh, Goodwell uh, House. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> so yeah the goodwell house interesting all right so you're headed down the street towards the goodwell house and uh oh my gosh the um uh i can't i'm boomering it up over here my technology is getting in the way all right and yeah so you make it to the goodwell house and I'll head inside and walk out up to what is presumably like a registration desk, a front desk, yeah. where I probably know the person behind it if they always work the same shift. Yeah. And uh, uh, and it's a um, young brunette lady and um, in her um, pretty like especially for this era, like a very clean uh, nurse's outfit. And she says, oh, good day to you, Miss Potter. It's such wonderful to see you. It's good to be back. Do you know how Rose is doing today? Oh, I'm sure she will be delighted to see you. Do you mind if I just head on up if I stop and maybe is her nurse on the floor right now? Could I speak to her before I go in? Absolutely. For you, Miss Potter would be happy to. All right. Well, thank you very much. Sure. Do give Rosamund my best today. I will. I would, I would love to. Yeah. All right. And you're pretty familiar with the space yeah. and they just kind of let you go up. Um, the, the building itself, right, I mean, it's not uh, a concrete structure of any kind. And by, by, by the 1890s standards, it would be a pretty nice, uh, quote unquote, boarding house uh, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of its mental and what the clientele it's serving. Um, but it's still, uh, it's still pretty bare. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'd like to head towards her room, but I would like to try to seek out her nurse before I go in just to generally ask about her state and how she, sure. how she is today since she tends to be better some days and worse others. And what nurse are you seeking out? 
Uh, Ratchet. No, I don't know. Do you want me to make to make up a? I mean, is there a nurse that regularly cares for her, or is it just like everybody yeah, cycles you tell through? Me. You've got you've got oh. the narrative. You tell me. Oh, I didn't know I was allowed to make up characters. Yeah, of course you are. You okay. just can't make up their intent, but you know you can make up the character. <laughs> Okay. Um, Nurse oh. Polly. Nurse Polly. All right. Oof. I feel like we're really on an improv stage now. What does Nurse Polly look like? Uh, 50s. That's pretty old for, for oh, yeah. like stone, right? Okay. She, she has blonde hair and a blue dress and um, sort of manly features. <laughs> and she's very stiff when she walks. I have to admit, I don't know what you're describing. The mannequin behind. Uh, oh, goodness. Oh. Okay. That's not not quite what I was envisioning. But yeah, she's uh -huh. she's older, um, but still very energetic and um, like heavy smoker. Heavy smoker. Oh, wonderful. Right there. I, I wouldn't wouldn't have done that myself, but yeah, that's why you're the keeper. Uh, <laughs> ah. Florence. Oh my God, seriously? <laughs> okay. Polly, so good to see you again. Oh, wonderful to see you. I really is, really is. I, you make the, you're the light of my week, Florence, whenever you show up. Well, that's so kind. How is Rose today? Is oh, she having a good day today? I, you know, like yesterday, like the day before, but I, I should be delighted to see you. I know that. Has she been pretty calm lately? I mean, Has she had any episodes? Miss Florence, she never gives us a lot of trouble. And I, I, the days are pretty much the same for your sister. Okay, well, I think that's a good thing. She does well with uh, repetition and with her systems. Of course, of course. Her routines. She she did tell me the other day that the angels were around me. Sweet as pie she is. Really, your sister's just a, a joy to have around. Oh, goodness. Not, yes. Not, not like Ethel down in room 13. Oh, that one. Not so good. Well, why don't I head on in? Thank you so much for the information. Yeah, of course. You know that. Okay. All right, I'm going to head in. OK. And when you walk in, uh, Rosamond's sitting on the edge of her bed. Uh, she's dressed for the day. And um, she's just gazing out the window, kind of up towards the sky. OK. So I'll just knock, but enter, not wait for a response. Just okay. say, hi, Rose, it's Thursday. How are you doing today? And she just kind of continues to stare out the window. And I'll go over and sit beside her on the bed and stare out and say, what are you looking at? And she says, can you see the stars? Well, you know, I don't see them right now. The sun's pretty bright today. I can see the stars. What you do they your, look like? You, you wore your pendant. I'm glad you, you know, wore your pendant. I always wear my pendant. It's important that you always wear your pendant. You know, you say that a lot, but I've never actually asked you why. I don't know why, but the stars, the stars show me that you wore your pendant. And the stars tell me that you need to keep wearing it. Well, you know, I will wear it every day because you gave it to me. Mm. Mm. So have you been 
Have you been having a good week this week, Rose? Have you been outside at all? Out of your room? Got some fresh air? It's not important to me. It's only important to you. Well, you know, if it's important to me, maybe you could just do me a favor and try to get some fresh air for my sake. Are you here? I am here. I'm here with you. And I'll just touch her hand. Okay. She like jumps. lay my hand on hers. Okay. Uh, she she jumps and she she moves her hand away. Not like in a not like in an aggressive kind of way, but she just like shifts it tighter into herself. Rose, honey, I'm sorry to startle you. I just wanted you to know I'm here beside you. It's not right for you to touch me when I can't see you. Could you look at me? Could you turn away for a moment? It's, it's not my eyes that can't see you. It's the darkness around you. Oh, well, you've never no mentioned a darkness before. You've never brought it with you. Well, how can we get rid of this darkness? Because I would love to be able to be seen by my own sister. Maybe sure. we could take a walk together. Maybe the sunlight would banish the darkness. If it'll make you feel better, it won't make your darkness go away. It well, well, let's try. Let's go take a walk. There's such a nice little courtyard, I assume. Hey, some make, some green space. <laughs> yeah, make a persuade roll. Okay. Oh, the darkness. Hey, could I make a charm roll? <laughs> sure, you can make a charm roll. That's good. Uh. I made it. I barely made it. All right. So what do you say to her to convince her to go out of the room with you? Um, well, I say, I truly believe that the sunlight will banish this darkness. And then you can see me. And then we can sit down and catch up like we do every Thursday. You know you love your routines. They're good for you. I'll walk with you. Only because you're in danger. The sun will not rid you of the darkness. Well, maybe while we're walking, you can tell me more about this danger. I don't know that you're danger, but I do know that it surrounds you. And she gets up and she goes, I'll walk with you, but don't touch me. I don't want your darkness. Okay. Florence is really sad. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Um, okay. So as, assuming we can just make our way through the building and out to yeah. some sort of yeah, little yeah. space behind since it's a familiar place. Sure. And we'll say okay. like the building's somewhat of a, a rectangle with the courtyard in the Great. middle. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Rose, tell me what you've done this week. goes and she, she she won't look at you it's almost like but not like she's refusing to look at you but like she actually can't see you and uh and she says florence i i don't know why you continue to dwell on such things what i eat what i walk you you must be vigilant now you must you must leave you you don't realize the danger that you're in. Uh, no, I no. Why do you think I'm in danger? I can't see you. Rose, may I touch you? No, please don't. Okay, can let's stop for a minute. Rose, not you. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I just like to walk in front of her because we are twins. We're exactly the same height right. yeah, yeah, yeah. and just stare into her eyes and 
say, look in my eyes. And, and you get this stare back. Like she's looking right through you. It's not like she's being mean. It's not, I, I, there, there's nothing about it that's that's um, condescending. It's almost like she really can't see you. Okay. Okay. Is there anyone outside in the courtyard with us? Do you want there to be? If there was someone out there, I might um, prove that I'm seeable. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we can we can role play this. That sounds like fun. Okay. I mean, is is there just like a nurse walking a sure walking there's a patient a, around or something? Yeah, there's a there's a nurse walking uh, a feller around uh, who's um, missing most of he's missing um, all of the limbs on one side of his body. And so she's kind of acting like his other set of legs. And he's, he has like okay. a really frazzled, frayed look in his eyes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well played, Rick. Well played. Okay. I'm worried I'm about to break Emily here. <laughs> we'll, oh, it's we'll, fine. Oh, it's fine. traumatic. Um, okay. Well, I could have killed Florence and it would have been okay, but Rosamund not seeing her is just way too much. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just getting me a little bit. Um, okay, well, Rose, let's walk over here for a minute because we we can say hello to these people and we can make sure that I'm visible because you're starting to worry me and I I don't I don't want to be lost to you. Will you walk over here with me? The stars are visible. You're not visible. And the stars say that that your books are dangerous. My books? Your books. But I love my books. Be careful of them. Well, the, words, the words may read you more than you read them. I will be very careful with my books. I always am. Let's walk over here and say hello. Will you do that with me? Will you do that for me? Of course I will. All right, so we'll walk over. I'll just say, excuse me for a minute. I'm so sorry to interrupt your walk. Uh, and I'll mostly focus on the nurse and just say, if you wouldn't mind, would you just and I... acknowledge? Oh, oh, oh. Boy. oh! oh! <laughs> My backpack <laughs> fell over. It made me jump. <laughs> ah! Is that, I assume that's the man and not the nurse. Yeah, and the and the nurse starts trying to like calm him, and, and she says, "Miss, Miss, y'all have to go away. He's he's very he's in a very fragile." Ah! That is ah! no problem. That is all ah! I needed, and thank you for your time. Ah! And let's Rose, let's let's go over here. Um. But you, you saw that she saw me, right? And you saw her and you saw him. I hear you. I hear you, sister. I'm not angry with you, but I can't see you. Well, what can I do for you right now? You truly, you want me to go? I want you, you want to, to cut go. our visit short? You need to go. I don't want you to go, but you need to go. Would you mind if I ask you a couple of quick questions before I go? Because I've been, I've been having some, uh, some strange experiences this week with exploring with some people around town and maybe trying to solve a mystery. And I wondered if when you were still doing your work, when you were still working with jewelry, working with metals, if you ever worked with something called Lomava. And um, make a make a persuade roll here. Oh, and it's definitely a persuade roll, it's and not definitely, a. Definitely, it's okay. definitely a persuade okay. roll. Okay, here we go. It's gonna be great. Oh my god, it was a two. Okay, it was great. Yeah, she's your sister. Of course, she can. Persuade well, her. that's yeah. real lucky. That's a that's an extreme success. Okay. Um. 
moment to collect myself, keep her thought. Of course, did you bring it? Did you bring any of those bad books with you? No, I didn't. I what what do you have on you right now that's different? Moby Dick. (laughs) Oh, okay. I brought Moby Dick to read on the train to figure out what the hell's happening with Quentin. But mm. what the journals went with Harold and the books that we were reading about like geology and stuff, those are just in my store. Okay. Do you have any of the jewelry? Oh, didn't you guys lock up the ones that had the weird um, writing in them? Well, the weird or writing hid, was hid the- them somewhere. Cause I remember you saying something like, Oh, we don't want people to find these the journals that ha- uh, the weird writing is locked in my back room the, yes. the storage room okay um but it does have a lock on it and uh the journals from harold for the journals from gerald went with harold because he was going to see if he could match anything in the house to the mechanical device pictures mm-hmm. and you don't have any of the jewelry on you oh you've got I, the, you've got those gold nuggets <laughs> That, I have uh, the gold nuggets that I'm supposed to give the to the wife of of dead Johnny. I forget yeah. his name. I'm yeah, sorry. But, Jason. But remember, they're not just gold. They're Yeah. Yeah. But what were they? What did they, they do? They tell if no. a space had great violence. They're uh I'm sorry, what I don't know what you're asking. What are what are the gold nuggets? I don't remember the story of the gold nuggets. Oh, they're my gold nuggets that I, uh, from my backstory, where uh, I had a mine that was a, uh, a vein of pure gold, uh, took it out, uh, was bragging about it, uh, claim jumped, practically got killed, still had some of the gold hidden, uh, uh, saved by uh, Native Americans, uh, The uh, went to a place where uh, that was sacred to the uh, the Native Americans I was with because uh, a lot of their people had died there in the past. Uh, the nuggets glowed. Uh, the the shaman told me that they were uh, uh, spirit touched, and and that I was somehow connected to uh, to that. Wow! And I will add, I just checked my notes, and I for whatever reason do have the stolen jewelry in my bag. Hmm. I don't know why, but that's what I wrote down. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm sorry. I've totally lost track of. I've lost track of our conversation. Sorry, that's. Really oh, Keeper, you were collecting yourself after I rolled a two because I was trying to convince her to tell me if she'd ever encountered Lamava. Yeah, and she says to you. Uh, she says, uh, uh, gr- Grandma showed me how to use the Lamava. And the Lamava taught me how to see. Gr- Grandma did what? She showed me how to use the Lamava, and that's how I see now. But how did she i thought it was just from here she had lamava at home yes yes she gave it to me um she's a fucking ghost why didn't she give me any our paths are different You should see that. I see it so clearly. I am here to be the eyes and you are to be the arms. Together, we must rid this place of the darkness, but the darkness is with you now. Can you use Lomava to get rid of my darkness? No, no, no. The Lamava helps me to see. That's why I can see. Do you have it with you now? No, sister. I'm I'm in a place of rest now. How, I mean, 
I just don't understand. How did this all happen? And I never knew. What did you do with it? What did she do with it? How do you use it? We would, we would make tea, Grandma and I. And then she would show me how to see with the tea. You're saying you drank you drank it. You drank it? Why, yes. But do not drink it, sister. I will not. Oh, my goodness. Well, when please we drink, don't drink any more. I don't need to drink any more. Grandma said the chance, and when Grandma said the chance, then the tea gave me my vision. Wait, I didn't understand. Grandma said the chance? Yeah. What did you say? Grandma Grandma would chant. Oh, chant. Yeah. Oh. Said the chance. Said the chance. The ch can you share these chants with me? I don't remember them. I was very young. We were very young. I, I had no idea any of this ever happened. I can't believe you didn't tell me about this. Then, or now, or any time. I didn't know when it happened. I only remember it like a dream. I don't remember it, remember it. I see it because I can see now. And I see us now when I was a child. And that's when grandma showed me. But I don't remember. When did you start seeing these things? Was it oh. since your accident? I've always seen, but you've only started listening since the darkness came. Today. You think I'm here because I don't understand, but I just understand too well. And soon you might too. Well, I hope I can understand you. I hope you can see me. I don't know what to do for you. You don't have to do anything for me, but you do need to protect yourself. Rid yourself of the darkness. I would love to do that. It's I have books. no idea how. It's the books. It's the books. Okay. Well, and I open my bag and I say, this is the only book that I have today. You don't, you don't understand me, sister. I cannot see you. Oh, goodness. The book that I'm holding is Moby Dick. Have you read Moby Dick? No, sister. I haven't read Moby Dick. I... I could leave the book, rid myself of the book. Would that help? I'll just toss the book on the ground. You know what book she's talking <laughs> about. Jeez. <laughs> Fine. So uh, I know, but I don't have that one. I can't. Okay, forget it. Okay. Trying to trick your poor blind sister with. <laughs> she's not blind. She thinks she can't see me. Nope. I'm right here. All right. If I throw the book on the ground, could she see she'll, the book she'll... on the ground? <laughs> uh, and, and she just says to you, it's not for me to tell you which ones. It's, it's for you to discern the books are dangerous. I can't. You, I can't. you must destroy the books. You must destroy all the books. You know me, you know I can't destroy all my books. I'm gonna pick the book up off of the ground, put it back in my bag. Rose, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on today. I'm gonna to go 
I'll come back next Thursday at the usual time, okay? Be well, sister. Wear your pendant. I have it right here. I will watch the stars for you. You take care of yourself. Okay. And then I'll leave. And then I'll go, ah! <laughs> what happened? Okay, I won't do that. Um, okay. I probably would. I mean, that would be like one of the most <laughs> distraught visits. Yeah. Oh my goodness. She's getting worse. Yeah. She's not getting worse. She's she's tuned in, man. She's Maybe. getting worse. Maybe. No, she's tuned in. <laughs> yeah, she was talking about, you know, memory is a, uh, a faulty way of seeing. She sees the... At least we know she sees what's true. Our characters don't know that yet. Do, do we? As players? Yeah. Yeah, you should burn the fucking books. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Our, our, our characters don't know that. But yeah, as players, you should burn the books, leave town, and never come back. Yep. But then we won't fix it. I, right. But yeah, it won't be your problem <laughs> anymore, survive. and you'll be alive. Okay. okay. But that won't be any fun oh, in the game. Fuck. Exactly. She could just be like, nuts too yeah. i mean she knows i have a lot of books she knows mm -hmm. what i do for a living right like there's there's nothing there that she said that yeah. well the whole thing about the lamava rings grandma true. made her drink lamava because she, she, she must have she must have known what lamava was but she didn't even say i mean that's not even rooted in fact she said the memory it it wasn't a memory. It was something that came to her later, like a vision of a memory. I don't even. Yeah. Well, no, she said she was too young for it to be a memory. But once she could see with the stars, she was able to see clearly what had happened. Right. So if you believe My... she's really seeing the, I was, the truth. I was, yeah. I was wondering if maybe, you know, how old the grandmother was and maybe the grandmother was like a ghost and taught her how to brew up some lamava tea and, and perform the chants. Is it possible that none of that actually happened and she's just being dosed with lamava at the facility yes. or in the town or mm -hmm. it's spiked and she's having yep. some sort of like temporal distortion? So many things are possible. Mm -hmm. And I really want to know what she is describing as stars. Well, remember the uh, one person, uh, oh, the nurse said that she says she can see angels around her. Yeah. I'm wearing fun. my pendant. Poor Florence. Florence yeah. was just hoping to have a little visit with her ah, sister. Right. <laughs> Pick up a deformed jocker. Get back on the damn train. All right. Um, let's wrap up in the do y'all want to wrap up in the cave? Yeah. Or in the like in the underground tunnels here? Oh, yeah, sure. At least we'll go meet whoever that uh, okay. person is. I don't like the sound of wrap up. Can can y'all can y'all talk for a second while I practice my voice here? Oh wow! <laughs> oh yeah, that, so, that's uh, great. Uh, so are, are we gonna have any sort of plan as we're going in there, or are we just sort of uh, waltzing no, just, in? Yeah, I, I mean, just I would think yeah, there's a person down there. Uh, don't know where the person came from, but I just mm -hmm. want to see him face to face. Yep. I know there's weird shit down here, so I am going to have my shotgun at the ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't okay. buy. I didn't buy into Quentin's nonsense about, you know, evil spirits and stuff. But mm -hmm. I know there's some weird shit. Yeah, and, and I don't buy that shit either. I think there's a purely technological explanation for this. Uh, this is a very technologically savvy joint. Uh, so yeah, you know, it makes sense that he would see something that he couldn't explain, given his limited. Uh, understanding of of such technology, but uh, but Harold's pretty convinced it's just that there's a, a scientific answer. All right, we ready? Yeah, let's yep. do it. All right. So I walked on down the hall. Yep. Okay, and, and so I would I, be walking sort of at a flank behind him, so that my um, giant flashlight doesn't just go right into his back. It's actually going next to him, um, but I'm just a shade behind. 
Sure. And the, <clears throat> the, the tunnels aren't that wide, you know, like maybe like four feet. So, I mean, huh. you can, you can stagger a little bit, but it, you're not going to be at a full blown flank. Yeah. Okay. Um, Fair. They, they kind of snake around and as they do, uh, as you, as you start to make the corner, there's, uh, yeah. now he's got no light, right? He's in, he's in dark. Correct. And so as you're shouting out to him, he, he, he calls to you, he says, uh, are you coming with a light? Uh, yes, sir. Just, uh, keep, uh, you know, keep focused on the light here. We'll be there uh, shortly. Uh, uh, Caroline, I'm, right into it. I'm staying at least 10 feet, 15 feet behind them. Okay. Aware that I look a little fucked up and that if things, <laughs> and that if things look okay with this guy, that I'm going to drop the guts on the side and at least try and pretend to be normal. Wonderful. That'll <laughs> Good be luck fun. with that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so as it, he says, I see your lights coming. Keep coming this way. Okay, I, I don't see you yet. I I do not have uh, and and he uses he uses a kind of an unfamiliar term to you. He says, I do not have a flashlight. Uh, well, we got a torchlight uh, right here. We'll uh, once we get there, we'll uh, we'll have y'all lit up. So don't be scared. I, I suppose I could flash it by covering it up and, and uncovering it. That that would make it a flashlight. Oh yeah, you're talking about uh, signals, <laughs> Morse code. Yeah. No, no, I'm most most a uh, a torch. Yeah, I got a torch. <laughs> Oh, but it your torch flickers. Yeah, it's a wooden torch. Okay, and y'all, uh, you he goes. Oh, I see your light so well. You must be close. Okay, do I see him yet? Okay, so uh, you you see the openings right ahead, and you can see it's opening up into not like cavernous, but a much you know a room, uh, probably. Oh, 20 feet by 12 feet, I could say. Okay. And uh, with those really high ceilings again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. machine is still there or? Uh, you, so as you, uh, as you peek around the corner, uh, you see the man and yeah. he's, he's kind of doing one of these mm -hmm. and um, uh, behind him, there's like a hole, like a just a giant hole in the wall. Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, we're looking. Uh, hi, uh, and I see him, right? So I hold my torch off to the side so he can see. Oh, you meant my face. You meant actual torches, not like a torch. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A Harold, proper what, torch. Harold, what's your light source? Uh, well, it's a torch, but it's one that I fashioned um, into like a high-powered torch. Remember, I made like a reflector, like a polished metal oh, reflector yeah. around it. Yeah, so it's like a, um, a, more like a lantern. Yeah, but it, it's you not with a, electric. You don't have a proper torch. Uh, no, I had to whip this one up with some rags and some, uh, some uh, well, uh, tallow. May I ask you, kind sir, you... You asked me what year it was, or some member of your party. What year is it for you? Uh, 1892. Now, uh, uh, sir, now it's, it's our, we're looking for our friend Quentin. He, uh, he went down this way. Is he, is he there? Is there a man lying on the floor next to you? By George, we've done it. What, George? Is George <laughs> yeah. there too? How many are? How many y'all are there? Oh my goodness! Uh, uh, sir, how how did you come to be in in this here tunnel? It's remarkable. And, and have you had any? Have you suffered any head wounds recently? Uh, Phil, I, I think I think this is okay. It's just a feller. 
He don't even look like he's armed. Yeah, but he is talking pretty funny. Uh, well, I think you might be able to help him. He might have uh, been conked on the noggin. That's what Phillip, I'm thinking. Are, are, Phillip, is there any rubble to, around? Hang on. Philip, start, you start to hear the most alluring sound, right? Like, it's, it's just, it's a deep, resonant. <laughs> uh, you can't make out any words, but it, it's calling to you, and it just wants you to, to come closer. Uh, rubble, yes, there's rubble everywhere. When you say closer, you mean farther down into the tunnel or back where we came? No, no, for, like further into the room. It wants you to come into, you, it, you know that it's like calling you into the room. So they're in a room. I, I kind of visualized they were, everybody was still in like a tunnel of sorts. No, no, it, op no, it opened no, no, up this, into. Yeah, uh, it opened up and the man's yeah, in into, front into of a, like. A rough hewn. Yeah. yeah, I think you missed that part when you were finding that, that background. Thank you. Well, I, I thought it was an appropriate background for his English character. And now that there's a siren of sorts involved, um, I can go with this one. Okay. So, uh, 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 so I'll, I'll do a psychology role, or can I? Or am I just infatuated by this? Like, can I uh, try and? It, you could do a pal role. Okay. Uh, what did you want to do with the rubble, Harold? Oh no, I'm just I, I'm I'm looking to see if um, the cave in and uh, the well the explosion and subsequent cave in may have collapsed some of this tunnel and dropped a rock on this gentleman's head, oh. uh, causing him to think that he is from another it's time. A, it's a reasonable assessment. Okay. I got a three. Oh, um, this voice, you are, are so strangely drawn to it. Keeper yet, says your three don't matter, son. And, <laughs> and you're completely torn. But your curiosity about it is overwhelming you. What? What? I need to get a one for this? Jesus! I thought a three is a, is it a one to no, five you, a critical I, success? I'm, I'm I'm letting you make your decision, but I'm just letting you uh -oh. know as a character, your curiosity is overwhelming. <laughs> uh, Bill, what's up? You got a strange expression on your face because he was only like ten feet behind us. Yeah, now, yeah. He's, now he's I, like. I say, I say, have you got, you, you, you guys hearing this sound? Uh, I, no, I don't hear nothing except this here feller we're talking to. Yeah, there's I think you might want to check him. There's some sort of alluring, alluring. A, a what? A what? A alluring. alluring. I think right, you're, so I'll take, you're, you're, I'll you're, take you're stuck with the meat. You're, you you got to stop thinking about the meat, Phil. Your loins are rumbling? My, my loins. So I'll take a couple of the uh, flesh bits that I have in my pocket. Okay. And I'm going to stick them in my ear. Fair. Okay, perfect. Um, oh, and that, Jesus. that shuts out the sound. The sound goes away. Uh, but as you look towards the man, so all all you, Harold and Bo, all, of, all you see behind this man is a hole in the wall. Yep. Um, Phil, and it's you, clearly a hole. It's not like an absence of matter. Yeah. Phil, you see your family inside the hole. Oh, God. Oh, fucked up. Fucked up. Oh. Uh, well, I and, just ate. And, I was oh. going to say, do you get hungry? <laughs> <laughs> and your, your wife's calling to you, but you have meat in your ears. She's. <laughs> and oh, so. Oh, Oh wow! So guy, so I I, I don't know. Does my you have fire? To, what you have to I make a here? sanity roll that. on this yes. first. Yeah. 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 Oops. Oops. All right. Thirty. Oh, he's one. he's <laughs> got the. <laughs> he's getting a little Rick, jittery. Rick, got the Rick shakes. Yeah. I'm getting I'm getting rickets is what I'll call it. So uh, I got a I got a thirty one. Uh, so I make that. Okay. So just take off one point of sanity then. Okay. 
and I, and I'll sort of you know rub my eyes and uh, <laughs> which this... are bloodied. So I'm oh, trying to nice. look yeah, even God. better now. Yeah, because you just threw the intestines down. And I think that's a great place for us to end for the night is you (laughs) with your bloodied eyes staring off at the distance in your family and this guy mumbling to himself, 1892, 1892. Bloody I've got meat chunks in my ear for what it's just. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Can you make sure all that's in the write-up for next week, Florence? Because I want to make sure we start off with meat chunks in his ears. I've got, well, I, I wrote flesh bits become earplugs. Oh, wonderful. Flesh. Oh, that that's beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's just great. And on that note, wow. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us tonight. This was a ton of ridiculous fun. Um, find us online underthelibrary.com you can follow us on twitter at under the lib and don't forget if you like what we're doing and uh you want to get some extra bits uh check us out on patreon patreon.com slash under the library for myself for michael rick for the absent wayne and scott for rick and emily and chris thanks so much for joining us and we will see you next time Yank his pieces of his tongue off uh, and, and put him in, in his ear. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's a lovely thing to end on.